<laughs> yeah, I look pretty happy on the thumbnail. There is a reason I'm really excited by this latest update for Luminar Neo, and that's because we finally have merge layers. <laughs> And what is one small step in the program's development is actually a giant leap for our photo editing and workflow. And if you're not sure why merging layers is such a big deal, you will by the end of this edit, I'm gonna show you. And stick around till the end because the last thing I'm gonna to do to this photo showcases another really useful feature that they've added with this update to Neo. Right, let's get into it. I really loved being at Castle Point in New Zealand, but unfortunately, while I was there during midday, there was no interesting light, there was nothing going on in the sky, and so the shot I've got is pretty drab. And so we'll see if we can't use Luminar Neo to give this photo a bit of a boost. So the first thing I do with any edit is jump into Develop Raw. That's gonna give me access to the correct camera matching profile. So I'll go for camera standard for this one. And usually for my raw development, I like to just bring the highlights down to make sure that they're protected. And usually it'll be a case of boosting up the shadows a little bit. Obviously we can go higher with that to bring in more detail, but the more detail in the shadows you bring in, the less contrast you have. So it's a bit of a balancing act, but initially with develop raw, I do like to bring those shadows up. I'd also like to warm the color temperature of this up. I just feel it's a little on the cool side. And so I'm gonna grab the temperature slider and just ease that up so that the photo looks a lot more warm and inviting. And we can also play with the tint as well, and maybe just a little bit of extra saturation and vibrance. Now, if you do want to add sharpness to your photo during the develop raw stage is the best time to do it while we're working on that raw data. And I find a setting of about 50 works really well. Now that's all I'm gonna do for this photo because I just wanna dive into the stuff that's gonna give us the most bang for our buck. And what I'd love to do in this photo is replace this sky. So let's go into the landscape section, go to Sky AI, and we're just gonna choose something different. And I quite like the look of this one, which is from my Tranquil Evenings collection. And I'm just gonna manipulate the vertical position to bring down more of that interesting sky. By the way, if you're bored with the skies that ship with Luminar Neo, I have nine collections all taken here in beautiful New Zealand, beautifully edited, and currently they're bundled up with a massive discount. If that sounds like something that interests you, I'll put a link to that along with the discount code in the description below. 270 pre-edited skies from beautiful New Zealand, heaps of creative possibilities, and you don't have to keep using those same Luminar Neo skies that everybody else who's got Luminar Neo is using. Right, let's press on. And obviously we have the ability to flip the sky, but what you always want to do is match the direction of the sky with the scene into which you're introducing it. So flipping the sky this way just doesn't make sense. You can see the shadow on the right-hand side of the lighthouse here, which indicates that the light is coming from the left-hand side. So we'll just change that back. We can refine the mask by playing with these sliders if we want to, but seeing as this isn't really a video on sky swap, we're not gonna go into that. But one thing I do want to bring your attention to is the fact that we can create a reflection from the sky in the water. And while it's pretty clever how Luminar Neo can do that, if I toggle the before and after, in my opinion, it's not as accurate as I would like. I'd like to see more of these clouds reflected down here. And so that's where our first instance of layers is gonna come in. So I'm just gonna close that tool down for now, and we're gonna come over to the left-hand side where we can access layers, click the plus icon, and now I'm going to load my sky in as a whole new layer by clicking it. So you can see that it's currently filling the screen and it's not stretched to the sides. So no problem, I'm just gonna click fill and that's just going to stretch the sky while maintaining the same aspect ratio. Now currently we have our layer set to 50% opacity. So that's this slider right here. So if it's 100, all we see is the layer and nothing underneath. And as we drop that, we start to see through it. So while we're manipulating and positioning this, setting it to 50% is a pretty good idea. Because it's a reflection, what I want to do is flip that sky up this way. And so now I'm able to move this and position it so that it appears as if it's reflecting about the horizon line. If you're concerned that you haven't quite lined it up properly and you might have a little gap, just stretch it out a little bit, it's no big deal. And now we're gonna choose the masking option and I'm gonna brush this in only where I want it. So with a strength of 100, that's gonna get the job done nice and quickly. So I'll paint it over the water while avoiding the reflection of the land. Now, if we have a look at our layer with 100% opacity, we can clearly see where we've painted that and now it's an opportunity for us to come in and refine that mask. So I'm just gonna take it away from the sand there, drop the strength of my brush and I just wanna do a little pass over here 
so that we reintroduce that lighthouse. Now I'm going to darken down that reflection in the water because obviously the sky is our light source, so the reflection is going to be darker, bright sky, darker reflection. But watch what happens as I apply the tool to darken this down. And this is key for that merge layers idea. So if I want to darken down that water, easiest way to do it is just to grab the exposure slider and start to bring that down. And that's great. That is exactly what we want. Here's our before, here's our after. Now here's the problem that the ability to merge layers solves. So let's suppose that we're happy with this edit and we want to apply another tool globally. So we want to affect the whole photo now. For argument's sake, let's say we wanted to turn this photo black and white. So we might think, okay, we we'll jump into the black and white tool here, convert to black and white. Well, as you can see, that has not affected the whole photo only this layer. So what was just a benefit to us before is now one big fat editing headache. So in comes merge layers. And to do that, to merge the layers, all we need to do is select both layers. So just clicking on either of these is to select that particular layer. But if you want both of the layers, which we do, we want to hold shift and then click on the unselected layer. Now both of these are selected. I can right click or option click on a Mac and we have the ability to merge layers. And now with this new merged layer selected, we're able to edit this as one whole photo again. So for example, if we want to add some dramatic filter to this, it's going to apply globally, not just to the water reflection that we added, but the whole photo. If we want to add some mystical, oh yeah, my favorite tool is going to get a look in. Again, you can see how it's applying to the photo as a whole. I'm just going to pop in a little bit of Accent AI as well, before and after. And in terms of color grading, adding a particular color look to your photo, that's always one of the very last things that you want to do. And so if you've got multiple layers, you would have to apply that color grade to each individual layer, how Luminar was previously. So now with merged layers, we can apply that color grade directly onto this merged layer. So let's add some color toning. Let's say we want to cool down the shadows. So we're going to put a bit of blue into those shadows. And then for the highlights, we want to warm them up. So I'm going to crank the saturation nice and high, grab the color, and then move that into a yellowy orange that I feel happy with. And then I can play with the balance if I want to add more of that blue shadow in, or I can push it the other way and warm up more of the photo with the nice orangey highlights. So here's our before and our after with our color toning. As is often the way when I'm doing these videos, I might have taken this just a little bit too far. And usually if that's the case, you'd have to go into each and every tool and reduce the overall amount of those tools. However, with merge layers, we now have an added benefit to this as well, where we can reduce this overall effect. Let me show you how. So as I was just saying, we could go into the edit stack and go into each of these tools individually and say, oh, you know what? There was too much accent AI, um, too much mystical, whatever. But no, we don't need to do that individually. We can come over to the merged layer section, make sure that, that is selected. So our layer is selected and we have access to the layer properties. So of course, that layer is currently set to opacity 100, i.e. it is completely opaque. But if we start to bring that down, we're going to reveal what is underneath by hiding that layer. So it's just a case of deciding how much of that new effect you want to introduce. So let's say we kind of like what we did, but we've gone a bit too heavy handed, so we might want to go around 81%. So let's have a look at where we came from and where we got to, our original before and after. Right, don't go anywhere because I promised you one more interesting feature that has been introduced to Luminar Neo, but before I do that, if you look at layers and see what's possible, but feel it's a little bit overwhelming, a bit daunting, don't worry. I have a new Luminar Neo course, which is 18 hours of what I consider to be my best content yet. And within that, in chapter 13, there are six dedicated episodes all to do with layers, how to use them, how to get the most out of them. I think it's about 77 minutes of education around that. So by the time you finish that, you will be a layers expert. So I'll put a link to that along with a limited time discount just for my YouTube audience in the description below. Okay, what is this final feature? Let's take a look. It's all to do with vignettes and cropping. So I'm going to put a really obnoxious vignette on this, something I would not normally do, but just so that it's nice and clear to see exactly what's going on. Okay, let's toggle the before and after. 
Now it all comes down to this new setting here that says post crop, but I'm just gonna change that back to pre crop because this is what we had prior to this update. So here's our before, here's our after. And now let's acknowledge that Anthony is a pretty rubbish photographer and he wasn't able to get his horizon completely straight when he took this handheld photo. And so we're gonna do a couple of things. Let's straighten the horizon up just by giving this a little twist. And let's also suppose we want a slightly tighter crop, something that comes in making the lighthouse a little bigger in frame and a little bit more heroic. Let's go for something like that. And now let's click apply. And as you can see, we cropped away the vignette we applied. And that is because the vignette has traditionally been applied to the outside frame of the original photo, not your cropped version. However, we have an update that allows us to change that. So the vignette that we've applied here, if we toggle the before and after, like I say, we don't see anything. So we're gonna reset that crop. I've thrown away the vignette and let's go again. So let's do a nicer vignette this time. So I'm gonna pull the amount down here, toggle the before and after, we'll say that'll do for this. And this time we're gonna stick with this default option now of post crop, because that means that when we crop our photo, that vignette is gonna be reapplied based on our new crop. So again, let's come in a bit tighter, give this a little bit of a rotation to straighten the horizon, click apply. And now if I jump into my edits and toggle the vignette, you can see that it has been reapplied based on the new crop, a really nice improvement. So I'm really happy with those two really useful features added in this update to Luminar Neo. If you want to carry on learning Luminar Neo, I've got a lovely playlist of four videos there that walk through a complete edit from start to finish. But if you really want to fast track your photo editing, I'd strongly recommend checking out my course, 18 hours of content. It will take you from beginner all the way through to advanced. And currently I do have that promotional discount in the link below. So hopefully I'll see you in the course. Otherwise I'll see you in those videos right there. Thanks for watching guys. See you in the next one.